And while parents and students across the city are waking up to a new reality this morning, public schools shut down as COVID cases go up. More than a million students are fully remote now. An estimated 60,000 of them do not have the devices they need to get online. We continue to work uh, literally student by student if there's a problem with service. We've had a lot of concerns about our kids in shelter. Uh, we have had uh, technicians going out to the shelters, working family by family to make sure their service is working. The decision to close the schools did not give parents much time to prepare. Here to explain why the city didn't make the decision earlier is New York City Schools Chancellor Richard Carranza. So good morning to you, Chancellor. Thank you for making the time this morning on such an important morning for parents, teachers, and the students as well. Good morning, Dan. So I know this wasn't an easy decision for you. I know it had to have been a painful one to make, but we had been hearing these rumors all week long, watching the numbers creep up every single day to that 3% threshold. So on behalf of parents, let me just ask, why did they have to wait until yesterday afternoon for that final decision, which only gave them a couple hours to make plans for this morning? Well, Mayor de Blasio last Friday uh, sent a very clear message to all parents, start preparing and making alternate arrangements. The numbers are creeping up. Uh, we, when we announced that we were opening in person in September, uh, we also were very clear that we set a very conservative threshold of 3%. And if you remember back at that time, there was a lot of skepticism as to whether or not we could actually open schools in person and do it safely. We've proven that we can do that. Right. So I'm just going to disagree a little bit about uh, the fact that parents had no, no pre-notice. What I will say is that it is incredibly inconvenient. What I will absolutely say is this has been incredibly hard for everyone, especially parents. So we understand that. But as the numbers came in yesterday and that seven day rolling average was exactly 3%, 3.00%, the mayor was very clear, we need to scrub these numbers. I wanna make sure this is absolutely accurate. Mm -hmm. There were a number of conversations that happened between City Hall and the governor's office. So there were a lot of moving pieces and we got that information out as soon as we were able to verify that, yep, we hit that 3%. Uh, and because we had given a heads up, uh, schools did a great job of getting that information out as quickly as possible. I, you know, and the, the positivity rate within schools is what, 0.23%. So I think some parents are like, well, why can't we keep schools open? You mentioned the governor's office, and that's why I want to focus on this confusion yesterday. There seemed to be these different messages that we were hearing from Mayor de Blasio and from Governor Cuomo. If there were those conversations happening between both, why didn't the governor say that schools were going to be closed? It added to confusion for parents who were waiting. I know you're saying they had been given notice last week, but to find out hours before the next day that they had to actually implement those plans is tough for them. And there seems to be this mixed messaging between the governor and the mayor. There's no question it's tough. There's no question it's been difficult for parents. Uh, we're uh, very empathetic about that. You have to ask the governor about his, his metrics. I want to talk about plans in place to support parents who are not able to stay at home with their children to help with remote learning because they do have to work. A lot of them are frontline workers. What are the plans for them? So Learning Bridges is a multi-agency effort in the city of New York City uh, to provide childcare for, for parents, especially the parents that you just mentioned, essential workers, frontline responders, et cetera. So it's very simple to get on our website. We have over 40,000 seats available. Uh, it's schools.nyc.gov, and you'll find a link there for uh, being able to get information. You can also call 311 to find out where the closest Learning Bridges uh, program is to you. Uh, but that is up and running. Mm -hmm. It's also important to understand that food will be continue to be served at, at all of our schools, and uh, the, those hours are during the day from 9 to 12, and then uh, an afternoon shift as well. So all of that information is on our website and available at 311 as well. And, you, and yesterday, and you and I have talked about the fact of getting these devices out has not been easy, but we're eight months into this, right? And you said yesterday there's an estimated 60,000 students who still need devices for remote learning. I get it. There is a lot of them. But for those 60,000, they're saying, what the heck is going on? Why can't I get a device? I can't build, I can't build the devices. There's a, there's a supply chain issue. New York City and every school system in America are ordering devices. They are backward. The, 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 the benefit that we have in New York City is that we've literally gone to the front of the line. There are 40,000 devices that have already been delivered. 
Once they're delivered, it's not just taking them out of the box. We have to insert the LTE cards so that they have internet connectivity. We have to put the cases on them and then ship them to students because it's difficult to get them to students in person. So all of this is happening. There are 40,000 devices right now being processed uh, and getting into the hands of students. Uh, for students that don't yet have a device, schools have, because they've had some time, have prepared uh, packets of work so students aren't falling behind in their schoolwork. So again, just think of the massive quantity of devices, over 300,000 already delivered, another 100,000 that we've ordered, and we're ordering more as students come forward and say, the device I had doesn't work yeah. anymore, or my own personal device doesn't work so, anymore. This isn't something that's just static. So again, we're working as hard as we can to make sure all students have what they need. So in the paper packet, some would say, well, I'm not getting that one-on-one -on -one connection with my teacher the best way I can through a device. What's the time frame? You said 40,000 are in production. For those who don't have it, what, is there a date that they will get it? We're working, we're getting shipments every day. Uh, and we're processing them as fast as we can. I, I, again, I want to reemphasize, this is a supply chain issue. The manufacturers can't make enough devices for every school child in America quickly enough. So as soon as we get them, we're getting them into the hands of, of students and parents. I want to reemphasize for parents, it's incredibly important that you come onto our website or you call 311 and you let us know if there is a need for a device or if there is a need for support, technical support. Uh, we've added literally thousands of uh, people to our tech support mm -hmm. uh, system. And the wait times right now for any student that has a techno technological connectivity issue is about 20 seconds. What is the so, time frame? Okay. I understand. I'm sorry to cut you off, sir. What is the time frame for how long schools will be closed down? If, say, next week the numbers ticked back down to 2.9%, does, I know you said schools are closed through Thanksgiving. What is the time frame here? And do the metrics change so parents can really figure out what to do? Well, we, we know through Thanksgiving, and we're actually in active conversations, not only with the state, but also with our labor partners uh, around looking at what do these new metrics look like. And our goal, our collective goal, is to get uh, students back in-person learning as quickly as possible. What I will say, though, is this is this is a siren call to all New Yorkers. New York City is about to go into an orange zone situation, which the state declares. That means there are going to be much more stringent requirements on the city of New York. So if New Yorkers want our schools to open and stay open, you need to follow the medical advice during this holiday season. You need to be very, very disciplined because if not, that will negatively affect yeah. our ability to open schools and keep them open. But will it be a yo-yo, right? So if, if schools reopen in December and it's at 2.5%, do they have to have this fear that if it goes back up to three, that they would close down again? Will the metrics change? We're in active conversations about what should those metrics be. And again, when we set the 3%, it's not arbitrary. It was based, it was very conservative, but it was based on medical advice and medical experts. And again, I want to remind folks, when we were talking about coming back to in-person learning, it's a little bit ironic that some of the loudest voices around keep schools open were some of the loudest voices of don't open schools, don't bring everybody back. So again, there, there is never a, there's never a perfect time for capturing what those metrics need to be. So we are continuously working with our medical experts re-examining what is it that we're doing? Is it medically sound? Does it make sense? And we are in those conversations right now as we speak. Understood. And lastly, I want to give you a chance to react to uh, some reporting that was in the Staten Island Advance this morning, New York Post, that said the Archdiocese of New York saw a spike in web traffic and applications, 2,000 new applications from folks who don't trust the public school system wanting to move over now to the private school system because they are remaining open. Of course, it would close if there's an orange zone. But do you have any reaction to those parents who are saying, ah, I think I just need to go elsewhere? Our schools have shown that they're the safest places in New York City. Uh, we've done uh, incredible work to support our students and our families. Uh, so bless their souls. Uh, we're going to keep doing the best for our students in the public schools. Do you think, sir, that maybe other things should have closed? With I mean, you guys did a, a good job. 0.23% positivity rate in city schools makes people think, well, that might be the safest place to be right now. Why not keep them open? Did you want to keep them open and maybe have other things closed down? Uh, that's not my call. Uh, right. My call is the schools. And uh, I'm going to make sure that that safe positivity rate uh, continues to be as low as possible in our schools. We're going to spare no effort and no expense to make sure that our students are safe and those that serve our students are safe. 
Uh, so, you know, our work products show, our homework is that positivity rate in our schools. Our schools are safe, but our schools are a microcosm of the larger society. And New York City is ticking up to an orange zone status. That is a siren call to all of my fellow New Yorkers. I hear you. We need to get this under control. I hear you, and I thank you for on such a busy morning. I've taken up enough of your time for being here this morning to really narrow this out and, and, and explain it all for parents, teachers, and staff. Chancellor Richard Carranza, thank you very much. Thanks.